today's video lesson, we're going to do another worked solution of an IB economics data response question. Here's the question we'll be looking at today if you want to work on it on your own before we go over it. So pause the video now, and if you don't have a copy of this question, read the extract to yourself before we get started with our answers. Okay, here we go. So the first two parts of a data response are always definitions. On this particular question, they gave you two definitions that seem like they would be very similar, but in fact, in our syllabus, they're defined very differently. Notice that foreign direct investment uh, refers to investment from a multinational corporation in, generally speaking, a less developed country. Whereas investment is a domestic macroeconomic measure, a component of a nation's aggregate demand, which involves firms investing in capital equipment. So let's move on to part B. In this part B, uh, we, unlike in many part B's of data response questions, are not asked to draw a graph. In fact, this question focuses on a particular concept um, referred to in the extract, which is purchasing power parity uh, measure of GDP. So this is a um, very, you'd think a minor portion of our syllabus, but it does have some very um, important implications. So in my answer here, I'm explaining that purchasing power parity refers to the uh, income of a nation's people adjusted for the costs of living in that nation to give us a more accurate measure of the well-being of people in a particular country. So pause the video and read over this answer before I move on to part C. In part C, uh, which is a more typical question in a data response, we are asked to use a diagram. In this case, we're asked to talk about uh, what a government could do to assure stable prices for farmers in India. So first thing I did was I found a quote from the article that pointed to the problem and I put that quote in my answer. It's always important to refer to the extract in your answers, even in parts B and C of a data response question. And now I'm going back and I'm re re recalling a concept known as the uh, buffer stock scheme, and I'm going to illustrate it here. So pay attention to this graph. It's a system of price controls um, in which a government sets up an acceptable range of prices for a particular commodity. In this case, I chose grain in India which is a commodity whose prices tend to fluctuate a lot in the free market. But through a buffer stock scheme, the government can set a price ceiling above the current equilibrium and a price floor below the current equilibrium. Now you may recall that a price ceiling is generally set below equilibrium. Well, the reason that this scheme is effective is that if the price uh, in the free market does, for some reason, rise above the price ceiling, then the price ceiling becomes effective and the government can intervene to keep the price low. On the other hand, if the price in the market falls below the price floor, the price floor becomes effective and the government can intervene to keep the price high. This assures stable prices for farmers and a stable income and therefore an improved standard of living for poor farmers in India. So I'm about done with the answer here. Pause the video and read over the answer. Study the graph. And if you're not sure what a buffer stock scheme is, go back and review it from uh, probably unit two on microeconomics when we talked about price controls. All right, now moving on to part D, the evaluation. Uh, this evaluation is uh, pretty typical. It asks about the effectiveness of an outward oriented growth strategy for economic development. So um, anytime you're doing evaluation, you need to include so you need to include information from the extract. So I include several quotes in this answer in which I refer to China, which uh, India is compared to in the extract. So notice that I keep going back to the article, highlighting more relevant data and information that I can include in my evaluation. I'm not always quoting everything that I highlight, but I am looking for uh, particular data or statistics about the rates of growth, the rates of poverty, the income levels, of a country that has pursued an export-oriented growth strategy, China, comparing that to India, which has until recently pursued an import substitution strategy. These are both topics from our syllabus, so I, I was very uh, clear in my definitions of these two strategies for economic growth and development. But after defining them, it's really all about finding evidence from the article and including your own knowledge of economics in the evaluation. Um, so to what extent is focusing on exports of goods and services a uh, sustainable and desirable model for economic development? So it's really mostly about incomes here, about productivity in the manufacturing sector, about opening the economy and a country pursuing its comparative advantage, producing what it has the lowest opportunity cost at 
exporting that to the rest of the world and acquiring the much needed foreign exchange to acquire capital goods which increase productivity and incomes in the developing country. So pause the video here, read over the answer, and that will be the conclusion of this worked solution of an IB data response question. Good luck on your exams in May. Keep studying hard.